I'm here and it is a Thursday, the Thursday before iHeart Festival, because that's going down this weekend in Las Vegas. Now, in case you didn't know, I wasn't here and I know there's a lot to catch up on. I've been in Paris for the last week. I was out there for Jennifer Williams wedding with Christian and a lot to talk about with that. So we'll do that in about last night. But I am glad to be back. Mano is on the way in. He hit me up yesterday like, yo, what are we doing? Because there is so much we need to talk about. Um, you know, all this Diddy business that's happening and Diddy being in jail in Brooklyn and MDC, where actually I've visited before with my girl Topeka Sam, where we, where we went to go and speak to people there. Uh, but we will discuss what we know so far. And also we want to get your reactions to today. So uh, let's do what we need to do, what we always do. Start the show off with some love, with some positivity, because I know I say we need it, but I mean, we really need it today. 800-292-5150. Call us up. Let us know who you want to shine a light on. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's way up at Angela Yee, and it is a Thursday, and I want to shine a light today on my friend Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Williams, I told you guys I was at her wedding in um, Paris, which, by the way, was amazing. I never would have gone and, and spent the time that I did in Paris. I stayed a couple of days after just to be able to have some time to sightsee and do some touristy things. But I know it wasn't an easy time for her. She had this vision of what she wanted her wedding to be like in Paris. And when I tell you she was rolling with the punches, I mean... Things were just kind of not going according to plan left and right. And somebody else might have been like, this isn't it. It's not happening. But she definitely held it down. Um, you know, we got a chance to see their nuptials in the park. And afterwards, she definitely was out and about. So there was all different activities. We went to parties. She was outside. We went to brunch. We did it all while we were outside in Paris. And so that's the kind of woman that I think any guy would want to have. Somebody who is ride or die for you, no matter what the problems are. I know it has to be bothering her to see the things that people are saying online that they're accusing her of, that they're accusing him of. Um, but of course, I'm going to go to support my friend. And so that's what we did. So shout out to you, Jennifer, for taking a chance. I am wishing the best for this couple and hope that everything is going to be a dream come true for both of you. All right. Well, who do you guys want to spread some love to? Who do you want to shine a light on? 800 292-5150 is a number. Jasmine, who do you want to shine a light on? My 17-year-old boy. Okay, talk to us. He has ADHD, and it's hard for him to, like, get accepted. And here it is. He stepped out his boundaries and started working. Mm -hmm. And even though it might be difficult for him, I'm proud of him. Aw. What's he been doing? What type of work? Um, He's working with lumber and staining wood and paints and stains so he's learning and I'm just happy that he's just not gonna be this little boy and he's learning how to be a man because of his dad Okay, all right. Well, I love it. Well, shout out to him and shout out to you. I know that's not easy for you either, so I'm glad to see that he's doing productive things and it feels good. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, bye. All right, well, that was Shine a Light. And when we come back, we have your Yeetie, and we got to start it off with some Diddy information. We'll tell you what updates we have so far. We'll also tell you what an insider has to say about comparing Diddy to Jeffrey Epstein and why he said it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yeetie is next. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Angela's spilling that Yeetie. Talk to him. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here with your Yee Tee. And of course, we are talking about Diddy again. Now, Diddy was initially denied bail after he was arrested on racketeering and sex trafficking charges. And then they went in to try to get that appealed and give it another shot. And he is not going to get out on bail. They denied that as well. Uh, he appeared in front of the judge to ask again for his release as they're preparing for trial. And that has been turned down. Now, I just want to point out, that according to TMZ, they did find a pink powder that tested positive for ecstasy. And that was among multiple drugs they found in Diddy's hotel room when he was arrested. And he knew he was going to be turning himself in. They negotiated that. So the judge said, I don't know that I think you can trust yourself 
And I don't believe that council has the ability to control you, given the very significant concerns I have, particularly because of substance abuse and what seems like anger issues. All right. Now, here is what Diddy's lawyer, Mark Agnafilo, had to say. They're going to have to accommodate me and him and give us a, a, a quick trial. He's ready. He's focused. Nothing has changed from his perspective. I obviously would much prefer to fight this case with him out of jail, and we are going to try to bring that about through additional legal process. He believes he's innocent. I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might. And we are considering our next steps and appealing the court's ruling from today. All right. So he will be at the Metropolitan De- uh, Detention Center. And I did see that there was also a former MDC Brooklyn warden who is saying that his life is in danger there and that it's a notorious federal detention facility. It's in Brooklyn. And, you know, they're they're saying that there's a lot of fights there. He'll have limited access to the library and to the phone. And there's a lot of assault. So he is being held in a special housing unit away from the general population. Another person who spoke out recently is shine now shine was talking with the media in belize and they asked him about his thoughts about diddy's arrest because remember hey mano hey. uh, shine went to jail because of that 1999 club shooting that it turns out diddy was responsible for and here is what shine had to say while he was speaking i was defending him and he turned around and called witnesses to testify against me and he contributed he pretty much sent me to prison Yes, I forgave. I moved on. But let us not pretend this is someone that destroyed my life. But do I take any joy or any satisfaction with what he is going through? Absolutely not. All right. So Shine saying he doesn't have any satisfaction, wow. even though Diddy got him sent to jail and, and he took a right. charge for Diddy unwittingly. Mm. All right. Another uh, report that came out, the New York Post, a federal law enforcement source connected to the raid on Puffy's Miami home in March of 2024, is speaking out about what was there. And he said that Diddy had sex rooms at his mansion. And these rooms were filled with sex toys, bondage gear and lingerie with hidden cameras installed in various places that people wouldn't have been able to see. He said if you were in those sex parties, you were being recorded from every possible angle, including angles you wouldn't have known about. And they said when Diddy wasn't involved in the freak offs, he would watch them remotely via the hidden cameras on his phone sometimes casting it onto a tv in another part of the house and i guess masturbating to it diddy's also accused of hiring and transporting sex workers across state lines and internationally for those sex parties which would sometimes last for days if you recall in the reports they were saying that he would give people the iv drip uh, because they would be so dehydrated and then i guess send them on their way and as I said, they found a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant as well. Now, there are some people, though, who are defending Diddy. One of them uh-huh. who's trending right now is Faze on Love. Here's what he said. I'm confused. The Cassie thing, I understand. I think you should definitely lock this up. But I don't understand the other When has being nasty been a federal crime? Mm. Now, uh... Listen, I want to respond to this because I see there's various people defending. I don't think he defended him. I think he got a, a, a Well, he's question. saying being nasty is a crime, but this what? is more than just being nasty. This is not just being nasty. This is also, I think, another one of the issues is he was threatening people, um, allegedly, and then also filming people. People were getting drugged all, and doing things not to their knowledge. Right, allegedly. Well, Cassie, I think when well, we she know came what, forward, we know what Cassie. But here's my thing, and, and I don't know how much time I got, but my thing is this: I do not take everything that the federal government is alleging on face value. My experiences is different. I, I got fans, I got friends and family members who been in the system, that's in the system right now. I go to the jail. I'm, I'm, I'm very much involved in in these cases where they allege certain things that are absolutely not true. This this is a fact. This is a part of the attack. But what about the alleged victims who are coming uh, forward, like a Don Richard gotta, or like Cassie? We gotta who, get to we gotta get to that though. I'm just saying. All I, I'm not defending nobody. I'm just speaking from a standpoint of a person that had to fight for his life to get his brother back, because you know they they like to uh, overrate and exaggerate people's charges. And this has been going on since the beginning of time when it comes to the federal government. So I don't I don't just take everything that they saying on face value because I stand in a different place. I got friends right now, right now, who lives on, on, on a line behind things that they saying that they did that they didn't do. 
All right, but we'll talk about that more because I think when it comes to the bail and why he didn't get bail, that's the real conversation here. Why would he not have been granted bail? Some people think he should have been, but some people also feel like it's a risk. He's accused of blowing up people's cars, and Kid Cudi came forward and said that as well. Um, you know, Don Richard, you know, he's been accused of locking her in the car where she had to call her father with no door handles inside of the car. There's a lot of, of moving parts and people who were directly speaking on their experiences, but we'll talk about it. We have a about last night when we come back 800-292-5150 if you want to call and leave a message and weigh in we'll play that too so about last night here's how it went down what's up it's way up at angela yee i'm here mayno's here yeah oh, i'm back so glad you're here i'm back <laughs> We are going at it because we were talking about Diddy behind mm-hmm. the scenes mm-hmm. and you have your own experience, right. um, you know, with the feds and right. things that the games, like you said, that they play. Yeah, they play dirty games. So all I'm just saying is that I'm not just quick to just believe everything that they allege. That's all I'm saying. But some things I'm not defending. But some things you feel like you do believe. Some things. OK, the Cassie thing, we understand that, that it is what it is. Right. We know we know that. Right. But mm-hmm. all we I'm saying, video. which is crazy, because if we hadn't seen that video, people still wouldn't have believed her. Oh. And that's terrible, because think of how many videos of things we had. And and allegedly they do have a ton of video. So I don't know what's on those. Tapes. Right. We don't know what's on it. So I, I'm not in defense of nobody. I'm not speaking in defense of nobody. All I'm saying is that I know how those federal indictments work. I know that they allege things that aren't always true. And they, they, they overrate things. They exaggerate things and they spin things and create narratives of you they went they not they knock on your door 4 30 in the morning take you down downtown lock you up and tell you that you are you are you are part of a gang that you never even been in right and then have these narratives of you because they create their cases while you're not even looking yeah i mean the thing i think with this situation is if you believe one thing that's enough for you to have to but that's to the system that committed a, but a that's, crime. The, that's the thing so that's it not can't be like though. well if all say there's a hundred things that they're saying mm-hmm. you did right if one of them is true that's still a crime okay cool but but here's the thing systematically they they set out they set they set the stage for you to already believe that somebody is guilty so when they when they dismantle a man in the media by putting out information and videos and stuff like that so now you already like oh he did it well, everything think, he did I everything think, I think the problem is also that he denied it until the tape came out there was no right. accountability he right. was like no no and then the tape came out he was like okay I get that I yeah, was yeah, a monster yeah. I get that and and there's a lot of people who were very close to him at a certain point in time and people who have been speaking out for decades mm-hmm. you know and like we've seen all the Gene Deal interviews we know that Aubrey O'Day has been yeah. talking about this for quite some time so it is all going to play out but his bill was denied um, this was supposed to be about last night I was going to talk about Jennifer's wedding oh, but wow. I guess we'll have a chance to talk yeah, about yeah. that but this is such a big topic that we want you guys to weigh in and see what your thoughts are on Diddy I never ever take joy in anybody's downfall but I also am very empathetic toward people whose potentially lives have been affected ruined um, permanently by this and that is something that means a lot to me and I know how hard it is as a woman to come forward and talk about things that have happened to you um, because you get judged people don't believe you you know like I said people were in doubt of Cassie until that tape came out but I want to see what you guys think 800-292-5150 we're all speculating right now it's way up with Angela Yee yeah, 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 yeah. It's what y'all been waiting for. Oh, oh, oh. You're tapped in the way up with Angela Yee. All right, it's way up with Angela Yee. I'm here and Mano's here. Real yeah. And we're talking about Diddy. We want to hear your thoughts. I'm sitting here going through the 14-page indictment again with Mano, but we want to hear what you think about what you know so far. Uh, Mano's argument is about the feds and how sometimes, a lot of times they'll twist things and they'll over-inflate things. Yeah. Um, we want to know what Facts. you think, though. 800-292-5150. Jeff, what are your thoughts on Diddy? Well, I do agree with uh, Mano. The feds do fabricate the story. And as far as the media, which plays with the um, feds, they will um, make charges look extra. So mm-hmm. now the society have a the wrong picture of the guy. Mm-hmm. I've known people associated throughout the years who've been put in prison for stuff that they didn't do or because they didn't testify against somebody. They get charged for a murder or for a body. And this has been going on for years. So I don't believe everything they say about Diddy. I'm pretty sure he's guilty of some stuff. But one question, the Fed has computers since March. 
Mm-hmm. Why is he the only one getting indicted? And I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot of other celebrities on well, that computer. I know that they're questioning other people. And I also, and so that's not to say that there won't be more coming. But I will also say that everybody on the tape uh, is not going to be people who should be accused of this. Some of them are victims also. Some people allegedly, from what they're saying, uh, were drugged and were extorted and maybe against uh-huh. their will. And then that can be used for you to be like, okay, if you want to say something, we'll put this tape out and look what you're doing. That's true. That's true. So I, I don't want to jump to the conclusion because that has to be... Right, we can't jump to no it's, it's horrifying for a person, if that happened to them, you know, to then say you're you're in the wrong when you're a victim. So I think they have to go through all of that, but they are talking to people and getting statements. Okay. All right. Right. We're not going to jump to no conclusions. We got to let the information play out. And, and I, I don't think, and especially from where I stand... This is not for me speaking on the witnesses or what their testimony is or how they feel. But I'm just saying the tales and the fabrication that that the feds put on things to help tamper with the presumption of innocence behind anybody, especially a public figure. This has been done for a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, I do agree with that. Okay, well, thank you for calling. I have to say, it also feels like people weren't necessarily surprised because there were always all these rumors about, you know, quote unquote, Diddy parties. And and so when this is happening, it's not like, oh, my God, I don't believe it. People believed it because they've heard so many stories. Hey, Kiki. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, What are your thoughts about this whole Diddy situation? I really feel like he did it. And I I totally agree with you because I was a woman in that situation where no one believed me until the evidence stacked up. So, you know, us as we as women, you know, it's hard for us to prove that something has happened to us until they see the evidence. Right. And a lot of times people won't see it. It's between the uh, whoever exactly. was there. And if one person's saying one thing and another person's saying another, then, you know, there. I feel like there's been people like Aubrey O'Day. Um, I saw she made a statement and she said she feels validated and that things are finally changing and that she never thought this day would come. And so that's somebody that's been talking since, you know, 2008. Exactly. And it goes to show it proves money can't move everything. Kiki, I'm glad that you were able to to get some type of justice as well for whatever your situation was. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, Raphael, what are your thoughts about Diddy? I mean, honestly, the bail, I'm sorry. You got drugs in the room. Your, your attorneys negotiated it and you still messed up. Like, no, man. Like, it's ridiculous. It's, it's not just he's dangerous. He's stupid. Right. The judge was like, I don't even know if you can help yourself. If you're still doing that, knowing that, okay, all right. So you're saying no bail, and let it play out that way. You'll you'll have your trial, see what happens then. But you shouldn't be home. Diddy is not like the rest of us. So you know, Mayno talking about the federal government. He's got a whole team of employees. And Excuse what me. does that mean? It, it means that he's a rich person and he has a justice system that ain't the same. No, no. Okay, that's so not you think true. he has more access. He to... got more access. Does that mean that he's a flight risk? I think the other problem is threatening people because you saw they said that I, he that's the... he called Kalina like fifty four times, that, right? And then she but put out that statement. He's making it seem like so. So he, the fact that he surrendered his passport and all his kids' passports that means nothing. And then the federal government I mean, they put an ankle a, a, a ankle bracelet on you. I think a it, monitor on you. So I think the denial of bail was more about him intimidating people. Um, right, than, but I'm talking about what about he's it. talking about. Yeah. All right. Well, again, this is your show, so I do definitely want people to weigh in. And look, me and Mayno, we can agree on some things. We can disagree on certain points, and that's fine. That's, that's what this fine. is all about. Because we come from where we come from. I have a different experience. Yeah, you know, for me, like being a woman, for you right. ha- having to deal with the feds uh-huh. and people close to you in the feds, I understand your point of view. Right. I'm looking at this case in particular from my point of view, too. Got it. All right. Well, listen, we have Yee T when we come back. And you know what? Let's keep it going. Quincy was on lift service. That episode episode came out on Tuesday, which was crazy timing uh, because we did this interview like a couple of weeks ago. Mm. But he's talking about the status of his relationship with his father. I'll be sure we'll tell you what he had to say. It's way up with Angela Yee. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this spot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's feeling that Yee tea. Come and get the tea. All right. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm here and Mayno's here. Mayno is so irritated by us today. (laughs) 
<laughs> Let's get into some UT. All right. So Quincy was on lip service. And again, for clarity, we did this interview a couple of weeks ago. And lip service comes out every Tuesday. And so this was the episode that came out on Tuesday. Um, but Quincy talked about a lot of different things, including what is his relationship right now with his father, his biological father, Al Be Sure. They were just at the White House where that brunch was happening the mm -hmm. other day. They ran into each other after they we did ran, the interview. They didn't come there together. No, I don't think they went together. They both were there. It was a huge media event. Right, right, right. So Jasmine Brand was there. Nice. <laughs> but here's what he had to say about his relationship with his dad. I just talked to him a couple of days ago. He was uh, congratulating me on the album. I think we got a just a cool relationship. He tends to like try and do like the dad thing a lot, mm -hmm. but it's like that's not really where we're at in life. Like we homies. Ooh, you know, wow. and he had written a, a letter not to my him dad, you're my homie. when he was 17 years old. He had written him an open letter, which we talked about on the show, wow. uh, where he basically was saying that he would always uh, want a father figure. Diddy had been the father figure in his life for as long as he could remember. And that's who he looks up to and appreciates as a, as a father. But he said he used to always feel like, where is my dad? You know, my mm. my real dad. And he couldn't understand his absence in his life. Well, here's what he had to say about why he wrote that letter. He was like. Wait, what do you mean you haven't spoken to him? And I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do so. He introduced me almost to like just the way and to get your feelings out there. Control your own narrative. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, but it was just something I just wanted to just get off my chest mm -hmm. and let people know because people mm -hmm. always just, you look just like your daddy. So it's like, you know, if you ain't even got no real like yeah. relationship mm -hmm. with him and you hearing that it's every day, yeah. you just like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure glad that he made that reconnection for both of them, uh, because if you remember, Abby Show was hospitalized for two months back in July of 2022. He was in a coma and he had to get a new liver. Mm. And so, you know, you always sometimes I think would have some type of regrets, like we didn't have these conversations and things like that. Um, now, here's what he had to say about protecting his sisters, because that's important to him, too, because he considers obviously those are his you know, sisters, the twins. No, those are his sisters. Yeah, those are all his Yeah, those are his real his mothers, yep. daughters. Yep, those are his sisters. I've been happy a lot. Right. But I feel like when you continue your life and you almost like check into these new chapters and, you know, allowing everything to happen, you gotta like check in with yourself to like really see is what you're doing making you happy or still making you happy. Mm -hmm. Cause everything got its time. Even with like what you're doing, not just people. You know, so that's also too something where I'm like really trying to listen to my gut because I got little sisters to protect, mm -hmm. to give advice. And, you know, he also had recently posted a picture with his other little sister, Love, the little mm, baby. The baby. Yeah. So that's also obviously, you know, his sister, too. And Chance would also be his sister by those affiliations. Um, but, yeah, he even talked about Love in the interview and how much uh, she means to him and being able to post that that video tough situation to be in they mm. did show up to court too all of the right, sun yeah I saw to, that. to support diddy all right and kevin lyles is stepping down as 300 entertainment ceo um people were also speculating about that but i feel what like he already had sold the, exactly he already had sold the company and to be clear we see everything that's happening at warner music right and people right. exiting the everybody company, right? everybody yeah is. everybody they changing the guard yeah so it just was the timing of the announcement right. people are like, oh one, you see I this happen one happened it has nothing Anything to do with the other to do with that um julie greenwald has announced that she was leaving and that's all because of new people coming in as the ceo and kaz are leaving too yeah yep yeah. and well at some point yeah right yeah <laughs> did you know that is he i, I got the wire I okay heard. all right well anyway yeah so all of that is happening so for everybody with that type of speculation it has nothing to do with this it's just really something that is in the works because of this and he also is still staying on for the next year to help the new team transition mm. in all right well that is your yeti when we come back we have under the radar these are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines they're flying under the radar we'll talk about the federal reserve they have just cut interest rates what does that mean for you it's way up News. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Mano's here. No, Mano. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get into these under the radar stories. The Federal Reserve has now cut its benchmark rate by a half a percentage point. That's uh, 50 basis points. And they had a, a two-day meeting on Wednesday. So for people, this means relief from high borrowing costs, particularly mortgages. Mm -hmm. uh, credit cards and auto loans also may be on the way. Mm. Now, I do want to say with mortgages, a lot of times those rates go down based on the prediction of what's going to happen. So it may not affect it right away, but it has led to a lot of people saying, let me go ahead and refinance.
months, you know, my um, my loan. Right. And so the federal funds rate is now at a range of 4.75% to 5%. And there were so many interest rates, rate hikes that started in March of 2022. It really had made people stop buying homes right. for a period of time because people didn't want to sell it because they would have to sell it for less mm -hmm. because the interest rates were so much higher. And then people didn't want to buy because they didn't want to commit to those high interest rates. All right, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes because according to some financial experts, they believe another cut is on the way mm. before the end of the year. A lot of people were sitting tight to wait and see what happens. They didn't want to sell and they didn't want to buy at this point. Uh, but it does affect the average person when it comes to credit cards. Most credit cards do have a variable rate, so there's a direct connection to what happens right. with the um, the, Fed, the Federal Reserve. And so um, going forward, annual percentage rates will start to come down. But even then, it's only going to be easing off of exchange extremely high level so the, it was higher than it normally ever has been mm. my interest rate is 3.25 percent in my mortgage and i don't know when we'll get back to that point but it makes such a big difference in your monthly payments all right now instagram has posed new restrictions for teenagers and the question is will they work they're mandatory um accounts for teens that bolster privacy protection so new and existing users under the age of 18 will be automatically enrolled in teen accounts and that is because they're talking about excessive social media could pose a profound risk to mm. the mental health of children right so there's been a lot of pressure to try to make sure there's some type of regulation for children and teenagers so we'll see. Uh, so this this will be automatic. Yeah, this is automatic. If you are under 18, you will automatically be enrolled in a teen account. And so this was all announced by Adam Mosseri, the head of Instagram, in a live interview on Good Morning America. And that's going to address the concerns. He said that they've right. heard from parents about teens yeah, online. They need that. It's too much access. So within 60 days, your existing teen account will switch over. Now, yes, Dan, you're right. People could just lie about their age. But if your parents are allowing you to have it, it's up to them. Right, but your parents got to be on it. It's like my daughter, she's 12 years old. Like, we got to be on it. Because yeah, and you so can see access. what she's saying on there, period. Right. And be like, no, you are a teenager. You should have a teen account. All right, well, that is your Under the Radar. Now, we do have the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. We got a lot to discuss, too. I didn't even talk about this wedding that I went to in Paris. Mm. Um, Whose wedding did you go to? Uh, Jennifer Williams. Oh, okay. I forgot from Basketball Wise. And we'll talk about it. It's Way Up. Way Up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee Way up. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Mano's here. Up, no, Mano. Man, it looks like the Secret Service is now probing Elon Musk about his threat. Uh, well, Elon Musk posted about um, threats to, to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now, if you recall what happened, somebody said why they want to kill Donald Trump. And Elon Musk responded, and no one is even trying to assassinate Biden, Kamala. And then he added question marks after that. And he later deleted the post after people were like, it's, you know, you're it feels like you're trying to influence people to, mm. you know, come after Biden and Harris. So the Secret Service is now investigating. Um, the agency responded to the request by saying records it has about must post were compiled for law enforcement purposes and are being withheld because disclosure could reasonably be expected to interfere with enforcement proceedings. So they are aware of the social media post. Um, maybe nothing's going to happen, but the Secret Service does take those things pretty seriously. Mm. Uh, all right. Wendy Williams, Guardian, is suing a and &E Network works over the documentary they said it was exploitative exploitative is that how you say it? exploitative it was exploitative and people obtained these documents confirming that sabrina morrissey who is the guardian is now suing and they said she only got eighty two thousand dollars for this documentary where is wendy williams who is she to wendy the guardian why is she but is she a relative no she's the appointed guardian why though I mean, that's what they do when they feel like you're not able to... Right, but, but it isn't usually like a family member or something like that? Uh, not who's, always, because sometimes people feel like her? family members don't have the your best interest at heart like either. a business partner of hers? No, she was appointed to be the guardian. A lot of times... I don't know they, how that worked. Like, just some strange person that I don't know. Yeah, they're saying that she is suffering from dementia and... That's why they need somebody well, to make sure. I, let's that put it down that if I ever get dementia, I want you to be in charge. No problem. All right, so I'll be in charge of all of your yeah, estates, but yeah. not all your affairs because there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cardi B um, 
is upset about a non-payment lawsuit and she posted her receipts. I love when you have receipts that you can post. So apparently she rented out this Airbnb and they were doing that to go ahead and shoot a music video, mm-hmm. her and Offset. And the owner of the property said that they lied about their plans for filming plan, uh, for filming at the mansion. They said they were doing a TikTok. Mm-hmm. But then she had all kinds of... of, um, of proof that that's not what happened she paid ten thousand dollars and it was not like they got a special deal or discount for that all right young thug a trial witness insists that he would die if he has to testify that's a witness that was supposed to take the stand Uh, apparently he was feeling so sick he was hospitalized was on heavy medication and he said that taking the stand to testify could kill him and so the uh but according to the prosecutor, the lead prosecutor said uh, the witness's doctor said he is sick but fit to take the stand. And they said they'll have a medical team on standby. <laughs> That's crazy <laughs> that you're like hospitalized. Right. And they're just waiting for you to just pass out. All right. And in some amazing news, Stevie Wonder has announced 10 performances this October. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, Friday at 12 p.m. I got to try to get those tickets because I know my mom would be so excited. Her birthday is September 26th. You going to surprise her with it? I would love to, but I don't know how nice. difficult this is going to be. You can pull it off. All right. Well, it's the Sing Your Song. I shouldn't even have mentioned this on the air because now more people are going to know about it and get tickets and then I'm not going to be able to. Um, <laughs> sing Your Song as we fix our nation's broken heart. Uh, so he announced Pittsburgh, New York, Philly, Baltimore, Greensboro, Atlanta, Detroit, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, and Grand Rapids. And if y'all don't know, Stevie Wonder did come out with some new music, right? We have that? All right. People pushing and shouting. Oh, man. Uh, that real. was Can We Fix Our That's Nation's Broken, broken heart. heart. We have to, though. Yeah, let's all come let's together. Let's start right here. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is your UT. And when we come back, we do have um, Ask Ye. 800 292 5150 is the number. Any question you have, I'm here with the award winning advice giving. Mayna, we're going to help you out. But right now, let's hear the song Kilani from Jordan Adetunji, who is also, by the way, going to be performing at Powerhouse. It's way up. Hey, everybody, exit. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, you should know. This is Ask Ye. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here with the award-winning Award advice giver. Winning. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, and we have a voice message. You know, I was gone for like a week. And so now I'm back and we have some people that left questions for Ask Yee. And here's one of them. My girl, sister, and her son moved in two weeks after we moved into our spot. Let it stay for a week. The day keeps on getting turned like longer and longer and longer. So it went from a week. Now damn near three months. Messy as hell. Don't put a dime to no bills. And now we're over here bumping heads, me and my girl, because of this situation. So am I wrong for tripping? They keep on putting the date back. All right, so break it down. His girl's sister and their son moved his in. His girl and him moved into an apartment. Right. Two weeks later, her sister, his girl's sister, and her son moved in. They were supposed to only been staying for, what, a week? And now it turned into three months. She Ooh, don't that help is around, ridiculous. She don't help around the apartment. She got condoms laying everywhere. Like Nobody said all that. It? But well. I, I do think, and this is the danger of letting somebody come and stay at your house. Mm-hmm. They never leave when they're supposed to leave. Mm. Trust me, I know. I've had people who were supposed to stay at my house for a month and ended up really? not leaving How for like a... Stay? No. <laughs> that don't, no. Because no. that comes with too many That's a bad people. situation because you love your girl <laughs> and this is your girl's sister and... And her son. Now, now they may not have nowhere to go, but they, you like, man, they got to get out of here. Sometimes you feel like you enable people, too, when you allow them to stay. Right. Let me tell you what I had to do with one person who would right. not leave. I had to actually help them find a place. Mm. And sometimes... they wasn't doing it on their own. Because they were not trying to leave. Not only did I help find a place, but I had to like nego- help negotiate the price and everything. But I was like... You have to be very firm. And look, you have to leave by this time. I've found some places. You know, you should go check this out. Here are some listings for you to go and look at. And whatever situation, if we can help you with moving, I'll get the crew together. We'll move your stuff out. But you can't stay here any longer. It's affecting us. And if they care about you at all in any way, they have to figure that out. And even if you have to help with a down payment or whatever, that's her sister. Mm. She should do that for peace of mind at home. Well, she, she don't have it to help out. I mean... Listen, That's we'll not figure her responsibility it out. Either. It's not, but it's also not her responsibility to have her sister living there with her. Right. 
and you because it's not just about her it's one thing if they live in with just her but now this is encroaching on your relationship and it's not fair and if you said two weeks and now it's been three months and mm. you're still not making no moves you have to be really firm this cannot go on any longer the first of the month let's start looking at the, i need to see you looking at places need i need to, to know that, that you have a plan towards moving exactly and let me come over for a week just a week the just a th- week the good thing is i have a rental i'll throw you right downstairs just, just a week in that rental <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was ask ye i know that sounded mean but i've had my own traumatic experiences yeah. um who, who, and, who, who, who that happens to? I, it's happened to me with a couple of people couple of yeah and that's why i don't let people stay with me anymore no, it don't happen I know that I'm probably not, probably all right well 800-292-5150 if you can't get through you can leave a message and we'll take your call that way and when we come back i want to talk about this wedding that i went to a lot of different wedding etiquette i spent Spent some time in Paris. I was there for like a week, and I've the never. The fact that I wasn't invited is crazy. But we'll talk about it. There were a lot of pivots. It's way up with Angela Yee. Turn it up. You vibing way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm here. Mano's here. Yep. New Mano. Now, Mano, I had to leave you for a few days and go to mm-hmm. Paris um, to go to a wedding. Jennifer nice. Williams. She was married in Paris. Congratulations. That was, that was her dream to have her wedding in Paris. You had it. Um, her and Christian, and she had uh, several different looks. Her wedding dress was beautiful. It wasn't white, though. It was like a, a blush pink color. I showed you a picture of it. Yeah, but that's how she wanted it, right? Yeah, that's what the well, dress that she wanted. And everybody else had on black. The pro- um, yes, we all were told to wear black. Um, so the issue was that I guess there were some problems because, and this is not a secret, but her now husband was having issues whether or not he would be able to travel. He had to have, like, go to court. He had to get permission. And get permission. And the judge did grant him permission, but he does have to do, I think, like, 15 days. Um, so he, he he went to jail for two days, and then he was released to come and go to the really? wedding. And then he has to report back. Yes. Oh, wow. But I think there were some issues on whether or not he would be able to make it. And so... Uh, there, so he in jail now? I'm not sure. I don't know if this... Jennifer was still in Paris when I left. And I just got back last night. So I don't know if she left yesterday or if she's still there. Mm. But I just want to say it was a beautiful experience to travel and go and have some time in Paris. I don't get to do that too often. I actually have not had like a real vacation in a long time. And so I know I was there for a reason, but I was able to like sleep in. you had some fun. I did have some fun. It's a six hour time difference. So right now in Paris, it's 733. Mm. (laughs) Um and yeah, and Paris, I will say, is definitely the shopping capital of the world. Yeah, you get to shop on over there. I've been there. When I tell you there's so many Chanel stores, it's mm-hmm. like, I'm like, where are all these Chanel stores coming from? Like, within a short distance, it'd be like so 12 you, Chanel so it's stores. So safe to say that you are. Uh, I didn't blow a bag out there. I have no? properties I have to deal with, yeah, unfortunately. I, I was like, I need to go back. And then the euro is worth more than the dollar. So, you know, you pay for things in euros there, and theirs is like 1.1 to every dollar. Mm. Uh, no, our, our dollar is 1.1 to every euro. Right. And so that means that their money is worth a little more than ours. But the good thing is we don't have to pay taxes. So when you leave, you have to, like, fill out these forms, and then they give you back the money as either a credit or you can re- uh, request cash and get your money back that way. But it's a beautiful wedding. Do you think about your dream wedding? Mano, hello. Oh, well, oh, excuse me. What happened? You just zoned out. Do you no, think I'm about your dream? What you're do you think about your dream yes, wedding? Yes. I. You know what? I've been thinking about this so He's a hard lady. lately. He's going to say something crazy. I really, I'm really, really, you know, going. I'm putting it together right now. What is your dream wedding? How many women would be involved? <laughs> you got to stop. No, <laughs> we can't be talking the way we used to talk oh, no yeah, more. Oh yeah, all right, calm down. You understand? We, you know, for real. But so, what, <laughs> where would your dream wedding be? Would it be a destination or at home? Destination weddings are tough because there were a lot of last minute changes that had to happen. And I feel like if you're home, it's easier. But when you're away, and also I don't speak French, I was trying to use my little translator thing. I was like, I feel like I'm on 90 Day Fiance. I want my I want my wedding to be like a parade. Okay. Like a moving wedding. Oh, so you want people to just like march in the street yeah. for your wedding? Like a parade. And then what? That's it. Like That's we, it? Just like a parade? One, yeah, yeah, it's like a parade. Main a day parade? Yeah, like a celebration. My, me and my couple of... Um, your wife? Z- Okay, your wife's. Uh, right. um, but anyway, maybe next year for Mano Day, we can have a, a wedding for you. Yeah, just got it. I see you, Dan. What about your dream wedding, Ange? I don't know that I've ever had a dream wedding. I never really thought about it. I don't know if I would want to have like a big wedding, have no wedding at all. I feel like it's 
maybe I would be different later, but I feel like it's not that important. I would actually rather take the money that one would spend on a wedding and buy a property. Oh, you look like you you want to go get it, go to the justice of peace. Yeah. You like you get married in Vegas and come back married one day. I would and just come back. I have toilet paper on my head and be like, "Come on, we did it." Guess what, guys? I got married. <laughs> All right. Well, that was um what my last week was like there's a lot more to come from that but we'll be following what's happening with jennifer i saw a lot of people in the comments having negative things to say i know that was affecting her because it was a period of time when i was like why does my friend look so unhappy she gotta stop looking but then i think after that everything you know i guess if you really love somebody you can just cancel out all the noise yeah yeah we don't because anybody who marries you i know they're gonna give that girl a hard time why why would they I'm a good guy. That's what they're gonna be saying. Why? No, they they won't. They Why? Say, That's a good Why? look, girl. All right. Well, that's that, a great look. <laughs> well, when we come back, we have last word. That's where you guys get to chime in on everything we talked about on the show and give your last word. It's way up. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm here. My guy yeah. Mano is here. here baby. I was gone for a week. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you, man. It's, I was like, I cannot. Different. Life is different without coming up here. I saw you outside every night. Yeah. Dressed you know up. Me. Everywhere. You know me. Mano gonna put put it on though. You gonna Absolutely. put some ish on, ain't you? Yeah. I had actually had my uh, my wedding outfit on. You weren't invited, <laughs> and not. But you know what? You could have. You could have came. I could have came. You could have. Right? I felt yeah, like I mean, you would have been able. It's not to like make that it. was. That was in the park, right? First of all, the ceremony was beautiful in the park. Nice. Yes, it was outdoors. Nice. Um, it's public park. And things happen. Right it's a. It's a. It's pivots that people right, have to okay. make. Nah, I respect it. Anyway, that is your show for today. I'm actually heading out to Vegas for the iHeart Festival. I'll be giving you guys updates from out there. Um, iHeart Festival is in Vegas this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So we're going to see Big Sean, Doja Cat, a whole bunch of people out there. I know I'm going to sit down and talk to Big Sean while I'm out there, too. So mm. it's always a fun time. Nice. All right. But, uh, Mano, be on your best behavior. You know me. While I'm gone until you I get know. back, please. Okay. You know me. I always have to make sure. <laughs> you be checking in, too. I have to check in. Are you okay? <laughs> all right. And thank you guys for participating. Like we said, this is your show. I appreciate all of the input. Whether we agree or disagree, that's what it's all about, to be able to do that in a productive manner. All right? As usual, you have the last word. I'm an attorney, and I wanted to weigh in on the Diddy situation. The bail thing is what's bothering me. I represent capital murder cases, and... Many of my capital murder clients are on bond. With all that Diddy offered up as bail, the only thing I hear is that he might intimidate some witnesses. Well, y'all hit him with racketeering. Just him being in jail won't stop any intimidation of witnesses that happen. How did Epstein get a bond? It doesn't make sense that this guy is being held without a bond under these allegations. That's all I'm saying. Hey, y'all. It's Queen. I'm shining the light on my daughter, my lawyer, and my family, Maurice, and my son, MJ Jr. We love y'all. I love you. Mommy loves y'all. And bye. Angela Yee is way up. On the way up.